Let's take a trip out west to the unpredictable Pacific Division in our division previews here on ValleySports.com. He's Pete Blackburn. I'm Frank Saravalli from DailyFaceOff.com. We're not going to go through all eight teams. We don't have time for that. But, Pete, give me your biggest surprise, your biggest disappointment, and one bold prediction for the Pacific this season. Uh, my biggest surprise, and I'm glad you said the word unpredictable, because I'm not confident in any of these predictions because it is so unpredictable out west. But I'm going to say that the Calgary Flames win the President's Trophy, not only in the Pacific Division, but the wow. President's Trophy uh, in the NHL this season. And that, a couple months ago, would have seemed absolutely blasphemous for, to me for a team to lose Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk in the span of 10 days. Um, and, you know, to, to talk about them maybe even being better this season without those guys. But I really do believe in what the Flames have in all three zones from uh, the, the depth that they have up front. Uh, Jonathan Huberdeau is as pissed as any player I think that I've seen uh, coming off a career year. And maybe for good reason, because he didn't want to leave Florida. But now I think he's got a big chip on his shoulder. I like him being added to that team in Calgary. I really like their defense. And they've got one of the best goaltenders in the league in Jacob Markstrom. And we saw them put together a really impressive campaign, 1-82 through 82 last year. Obviously, the playoffs didn't go as nearly as well as they thought that it would. But I think this team has a very good shot to be as good, maybe better this year with the group that they have. See, like you, your biggest surprise could have also been labeled a bold prediction. And in this case, I'm going with Bruce Boudreau will be the first coach fired. That's your big surprise from me for the Pacific. And the surprise is because you look at the turnaround that he, he instilled with that team last year, basically stepping in in the first week in December, and they played at a 100 point pace or close to it to close out the year, being in the playoff conversation in the final 10 days of the season, which was absolutely bonkers. But in this case, there's a bit of a tumultuous off season between Boudreaux and the Canucks. It, he wanted a contract extension because he had only signed for one and a half years and he wanted a longer term deal and they didn't give it to him. They said, look, we negotiated in December, you need to stick to it. And so I think they come into camp maybe with a little bit of friction between head coach and management. And I'm curious to see how that plays out if the Canucks get off to a rocky start. Their best players need to be their best players. And just watching this team in the preseason so far, even their fringe players don't seem like they're banging down the door to earn a roster spot. Something just seems a little bit off to me in Vancouver this year, not overflowing with optimism, but Pete, give me your biggest disappointment in the Pacific this year. Uh, I'm going to say the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, and you know it's pretty obvious to me why. It's the goaltending situation that they clearly didn't plan super well for, uh, with Robin Leonard being out for the season. Listen, this team has a lot of nice pieces in place in Vegas. We know this. You know the Jack Eichel deal could take them over the top, giving them that number one bona fide center that they've been looking for, even when they were making strong playoff pushes. But, uh, you know, they gave Mac Max Pacioretty away for free, and uh, this team was a bit of a mess last year. Obviously, you look at the injuries, maybe that doesn't um, happen again this year, but they've got a new coach as well. Like, there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of uncertainty in Vegas this year. And ultimately, if you don't have goaltending, you don't have a damn shot in this league. And I am not at all convinced that the Vegas Golden Knights have any goaltending this season. So that's really scary to me. How could it not be? I mean, I'm going to share with you in that the Golden Knights are my biggest disappointment. Everyone talks, you know, watching the Golden Knights and the build up to the season of how talented the group is. And maybe I'm missing something. I like Jack Eichel. Mark Stone I, is still not 100% healthy. And I'm not convinced that he ever will be again. But I look at this group and I say they get really thin in a hurry once you get past maybe the top five players on the team. And that goes for not just their front end, but also their back end. Like Shea Theodore, really talented player. Alex Petrangelo, great. Um, but then where do you go after that? Significant question marks about Alec Martinez and his health as well. And that brings us to the goaltending. I'm sorry, I'm not betting a playoff type roster or contending roster on Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill. Um, and Lauren Brassois is hurt. We'll see when he gets back at some point. But Aiden Hill is a journeyman backup in this league. And Logan Thompson has, you know, really just a little more than a handful of games played to his resume. So 
Big bet on the Golden Knights on their goaltending, and perhaps they would have liked to have learned a little bit earlier about the status of Robin Leonard for the upcoming season. Maybe that would have helped them plan things out a little bit better. So, Pete, give me your bold prediction. If the biggest surprise wasn't your bold prediction, what do you got in store for us? Uh, my bold prediction, I'm going to say that Matty Beneers wins the Calder this year. And uh, Seattle obviously needs some more some more addition and star power up front. And I think Matty Beneers, uh, he obviously had a very small sample size, with, I think 10 games last season uh, coming on the scene, but he he produced immediately. And I think that Matty Beneers is one of the premier talents up and coming in the NHL, and he's going to have a real shot to produce on, a, uh, on the top line in Seattle that has you know, to be fair, that Seattle group has really improved this season. I really like Bjorkstrand being added to that group. So uh, I think Matty Benier is going to have a really good chance to put off a lot of points, and he could be the easy Calder winner here uh, this season for the Kraken. And potentially another Calder candidate on the ice as well in Shane Wright. You can sort of see the Kraken building right down the middle with Shane Wright and Matty Beniers. Uh, certainly an interesting one-two punch potentially for years to come for me. My bold prediction, you talked about the Calgary Flames winning the Presidents. A lot of people are picking the Edmonton Oilers as the slam dunk Pacific Division winner. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Los Angeles Kings win the division this year. And you look at the season, the offseason that they had, some would say pretty quiet. Well, they added an 80-point scorer in Kevin Fiala. And to me, when you consider him and the addition of him plus the two guys that they were missing in their playoff series last year in the first round when they took the Edmonton Oilers to seven games, Drew Doughty and Victor Arvidsson, two pretty humongous pieces. You're going to see more out of Quinton Byfield. Drew Doughty is hungry to prove the doubters wrong after getting off to such a great start uh, last season. He was turning in a, a sort of Steven Stamkos turn back the clock type season last year that we saw from Stamkos in Tampa before he ended up getting hurt. And I think the Kings have a ton of pieces there with Philip Deneau and Andre Kopitar to really be a dangerous team in the Pacific. Yeah, I don't hate that prediction at all. It, it, to me, it kind of hinges on what they get in goal, but I, you mentioned Quinton Byfield probably taking a step forward. What about Alex Turcotte? I think that he's a guy that can take another step forward as well. I think the Kings have like kind of a perfect mix of old guys and new guys entering the mix here. And if they find that perfect mix, they could absolutely win that division. I think so too. So many different choices. Can't wait to see who will be crowned Kings of the Pacific.